Christmas. The ancient scriptures for this day are filled with prophecy from the times before Christ's birth, when people longed and hoped for a Messiah. And they are filled with good news from the times after Christ's resurrection, when people longed and hoped for his abiding presence and his return. These sacred texts are peppered with names for the one, wonderful counselor, strength of God, eternal protector, champion of peace, word, light. These names reveal to us who the people needed Christ to be. Who do we need Christ to be? At this celebration of his coming into the world, who do we say that Jesus is? I started a list of names for Christ some years ago, to which I'm always adding. I hope you will hear this prayer and add your own names born of your need too. In this season of celebration, we pray to the holy for the birth of a gentle healer for the sick, way for the lost, hope for the destitute, wings of a dove rest for the weary, friend for the lonely, parent for the orphan, womb of life for the childless, shelter for the homeless, food for the hungry, hosanna for the harmed, hallelujah for the harvesters, safe passage for the refugee, freedom for the imprisoned and enslaved, advocate for the spirit-filled activist, peacemaker for the warmonger, leader for the patriot, architect for the faithless, incarnate for the inconsolable, salvation for the sinfully rich, 
temple table overturner for the apathetic, reconciled for the unrecognized, covenant for the scandalized, crucified for the marginalized, resurrected for the radically broken, glory for the angels, beginning of all that is good. Let it be so. Amen. O come, all you faithful, O come, let us adore the Christ child. Psalm 98 Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth burst into jubilant song with music. Oh, come, all we faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come, ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come.
गीत शास्त्र पांच अठाणु पांच थी नौ वीणा सहित वीणा तथा गायन सहित यहोवा स्तोत्रो गाओ तूरी तथा रणसिंगड़ा अवाज थी यहोवा राजा की आग हर्षनाथ करो समुद्र तथा तुम सर्वस्व जगत तथा तना रहवासी गाजो प्रवाहो ताड़ी पाड़ो पर्वतों यहोवा सन्मुख एक एकत्र हर्षनाथ करो ते पृथ्वी न्याय करने आए थे ते न्यायपणा ने जगत और यथार्थपणा लोग न्याय कर सैन In times past, God spoke in fragmentary and varied ways to our ancestors through the prophets. In these final days, God has spoken to us through the only begotten, who has been made heir of all things and through whom the universe was first created. Christ is the reflection of God's glory, the exact representation of God's being. All things are sustained by God's powerful word. Having cleansed us from our sins, Jesus Christ sat down at the right hand of the glory of heaven as far superior to the angels as the name Christ has inherited as superior to theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my own, today I have begotten you, or I will be your parent, and you will be my child, or as when God said upon bringing the firstborn into the world, that all the angels of God worship you. Hebreus capítulo 1, versículos 7 a 12. Quanto os anjos ele diz, ele faz dos seus anjos ventos, e dos seus servos, Clarões reluzientes. 
mas a respeito do Filho diz, o teu trono, o Deus, subsiste para todo sempre. Cetro de equidade e o cetro do teu reino, amas a justiça e odieira, odeias a iniquidade. Por isso Deus, o teu Deus, escolhi te dentre os teus companheiros, ungido te como óleo de alegria. E também diz, no princípio, Senhor, firmaste os fundamentos da terra, e os céus são obras das tuas mãos. Eles perecerão, mas tu permanecerás. Envelhecerão como vestimentas, tu os enrolarás como um manto. Como roupas, eles serão trocados, mas tu permanecerás o mesmo, e os teus dias jamais terão fim. Amém. Tetue 빛이 어둠에 빛이 돼 어둠이 깨닫지 못하더라. 하나님께로부터 보내심을 받은 사람이 있으니 그의 이름은 요한이라. 아멘. The word was coming into the world, was in the world. And though the world was made through the word, the world didn't recognize it. Though the word came to its own realm, the word's own people didn't accept it. Yet any who did accept the word, who believed in that name, were empowered to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor urge of flesh, nor human will, but born of God. And the word became flesh, and stayed for a little while among us. We saw the word's glory, the favor and position a parent gives an only child, filled with grace, filled with truth. Do.
friends. I am going to be reading Isaiah 9, 2 through 7 in Western Abnaki for you. This is, this is the uh, passage where it talks about all the names for Jesus and his coming. Kiwam o winuak bitzegiwi lada umbi kakwaseg gakisi besewila Waslo dal agemowo. Nildo agemowo, we agal damwagan nubi kawakwaneg emek. Bonial domogan agemawona kia. Absirozid agem awo chikita. Awosos lidal baitzo ozita niona wamit og wusad. Beno dawad linianan. Zo gemoig agema. Liwi zogwagan. Dat sano tabletak. Askami ndada. O lakami ken. O kawogan nikef. Agema aig zogemo matzimi. Agema badodzig o lakami genuk ogan. Ta sasa ginuogan nuspi. Gagin in ugui. Aho. Just 
This is a passage from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people walking in darkness are seeing a brilliant light upon those who dwell in a land of deep shadows. Light is shining. God, you have made the nation greater. You have brought them abundant joy. They celebrate in your presence as with the harvest celebrations, or as warriors celebrate when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the weight on their shoulders, the rod of their oppressors, you have shattered it, as you did at the defeat of Midian. For every boot that trampled in battle, every cloak that was dragged through blood, is now used as fuel for the fire. For a child is born to us, as heir is given us, upon whose shoulders dominion will rest. This one shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Strength of God, Eternal Protector, Champion of Peace. This dominion and this peace will grow without end, with David's throne and realm sustained with justice and fairness now and forever. The zeal of Yahweh, omnipotent, will accomplish it. Let us pray. O holy and gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon all of us, wherever we are. Speak to us through your servant or in spite of him. We ask this in the precious and matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved in Christ, I greet you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Merry Christmas to all of you, wherever you are, in the United States or wherever we are in our global community. Beloved in Christ, I do not know about you, but when I was growing up, Christmas greeting cards were only sent to people we knew. Mostly it was confined to people within our own faith community. However, today, due to the advantages of technology and the digital age we live in, there are various kinds of Christmas cards that can be sent within seconds anywhere in the world. It is fascinating to note and celebrate that people of all faiths, not necessarily Christians, are sending Christmas cards. One interesting observation I have made and hope you have also is greetings with biblical verses are being sent by people of all faiths. While I truly celebrate this new tradition, one may wonder whether everyone understands the biblical verses in the Christmas cards being sent. Do people just read the words without understanding their true meaning? One question I ask myself is if people understand the context in which these beautiful biblical verses are offered in Christmas greetings. In both traditional Christmas cards and digital Christmas greetings, one of the most frequently quoted biblical words is, for a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9.6. Let us reflect on this biblical verse for a moment. The prophet Isaiah prophesied these words nearly eight centuries before the birth of Christ. 
This prophecy was delivered to the people in the northern Israel on the western side of the Sea of Galilee. This area had been conquered by the Assyrian king and people there were living in fearful, difficult times. In the previous two chapters of the prophecy, from Isaiah 7-1 to 9-1, we understand Isaiah was dealing with King Ahaz. When two other kings were thinking of attacking Israel. Though Isaiah assured Ahaz not to fear these kings, but to place all his trust in God Yahweh and in God's power. King Ahaz sent his messengers to the king of Assyria to mention his loyalty in hopes Assyria would help King Ahaz save Jerusalem from the attackers. In order to please the king of Assyria, Ahaz took gold and silver from the temple to give it to him. Ahaz also changed his loyalty to the Assyrian gods. The king of Assyria not only defeated the attackers, he went one step further and captured and enslaved Israel's people. As we know, these things happened because, because King Ahaz did not trust in God Yahweh. It happened because of fear. Naturally, people were filled with fear. But to such a world, Isaiah brings the message of hope. His message to the people whose lives were engulfed with fear. Fear which had led them into the valley of the shadow and hopelessness. Was to have no fear. God would bring them out, eliminating the way. This powerful light was to be a light to overcome all shady places. The prophet assured them that the power of this light would not be limited to one region, but to all. As we read in Isaiah 9.1, but there will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time, he brought into the contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the later time, he will make glorious the way of the sea. The land beyond Jordan, Galilee uh, of the nations. The prophet Isaiah clarifies the one who brings this light for a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. What a powerful message delivered eight centuries before Christ was born. In Matthew's Gospel, we read clearly that Jesus fulfilled this prophecy of Isaiah. In Matthew 
4, 12 to 16 we read, Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali. So that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light and for those who sat in the region and shadow of death light has dawned. Hear it again friends, Jesus left his hometown, his familiar surroundings to bring light to places where light was needed. He brought that light as a counselor to people of all ages and people living in a world bereft of light. He brought it as a mighty God, part of the Trinity, glorifying God through his ministry, mission and witness. He brought it as a parent through love, caring for each child of God. Regardless of the societal class, regardless of the social class, reputation or level of faith, he brought it as a harbinger of true shalom, peace with passion and justice. What does it mean to us? Church, do we listen to the prophet Isaiah? Centuries later, we have seen through biblical and church history that God has fulfilled God's promise by sharing God's only Son, Christ, with us. God blessed us with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Do we trust and celebrate the power of God? Do we trust and depend upon the wonderful Counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, who is living among us or as John beautifully expressed in John 1.14 and Eugene Peterson paraphrase, the word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. Friends, Christmas is not just about parties, gift exchanges, sending cards, and Santa Claus. Though these things are part of our celebration, it is much more than that. Christmas is about lighting candles, not just during Advent, and on Christmas Eve, but every day, all year, in places where there is darkness. Christmas is about doing everything in our power to bring comfort and joy to those around us and in our world. Howard Thurman beautifully expressed it for us when he said, I will light candles this Christmas 
candles of joy despite all sadness candles of hope where despair keeps watch candles of courage for fears ever present candles of peace for tempest lost days candles of grace to ease heavy burdens candles of love to inspire all my living candles that will burn all the year long friends we live in a world full of fear people fear covid-19 governmental intervention crime and people who are different from them whether in skin color accent culture economics or religion this fear leads to a shadow within us and our communities nation and world our calling is to bring the glow of christ to the places where there is dimness that is the true gift of christmas we can give this gift to others not only during this christmas season but throughout the year we may need thousands of candles to do so but our christian baptism asks us to be the beacons of hope and candle bearers in bringing the glow of christ to all in the midst of all the glorious hymns that we sing the choirs we hear and the beautiful and powerful scripture lessons we read i know i know there is a shadow within each of us many have lost loved ones in the last year to covid and other illnesses we have seen our personal and close colleagues and others suffer and in light of the gun violence in our country many of us wonder how long will oh god how long will we walk in the shadow personally my four siblings and i were close though my beloved sister belona had been on dialysis for 12 years her death took me by shock though i have been in ministry for nearly 40 years and counseled many in death and dying situations i broke down when i heard about her death to a certain extent i am still living in the shadow questioning myself did i call her often enough just to say hello did i allow my busy schedule to prevent me from saying more than i did or just to say sister i love you thanks be to god many of you brought candles of light to comfort me in the midst of my pain and hurt for which i am very grateful let us not be discouraged let us move on depending on god's love power and grace 
For Isaiah reminds us in Isaiah 9 6. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. May God grant us the grace to move on as followers of Jesus Christ, filled with love and the power of the Holy Spirit. So the world may see the glow of Christ candles in each of us. Amen. Greetings. My name is Ashley Renee Johnson, and I serve as the Director of Connectional Ministries. Beloved, these are incredibly difficult times. These are incredibly difficult times for us all, and still for many in the Midwestern and Southern parts of the United States, this reality was recently compounded by the incredibly devastating tornadoes that ripped across numerous neighborhoods, destroying homes and businesses and lives. Today, I would like to echo a call 
that Bishop Devadar made earlier in December. And I would like to ask you to give, to give generously to UMCOR, the United Methodist Committee on Relief. UMCOR responds to disasters in the United States and around the world by working with communities and local partners, and they are actively supporting tornado survivors. Beloved, we are the body of Christ, and we are one of God's greatest gifts to one another. As we celebrate the arrival of Jesus Christ, who comes into the world and into our lives to address very real needs. Let us also be the body of Christ and share what we have with others so that all may have what they need. You may make a donation to UMCOR by going to umcmission.org. Christmas blessings to you all.
May the light of Christmas hope, Christmas joy, Christmas peace, and Christmas love be born in us and in this world today and every day. Amen. Thank you.